In this video, I am going to be presenting how distributed blockchains work and I'm going to be using the example of Bitcoin because Bitcoin actually has thousands of copies of the same exact blockchain distributed across thousands of full nodes across the Bitcoin network. Let's briefly go over the various elements found in this demo blockchain that we will be seeing right now we will be focusing on multiple copies of a blockchain so as you can see we have a peer A, we have a peer B, we have a peer C. In the case of Bitcoin there will be thousands of copies of the blockchain. For demo purposes the blockchains that we're looking at right now are highly simplified and we're just going to point some key aspects of this demo that we're looking at. In the case of Bitcoin there would be more elements but for the purpose of this demo let's assume this is a demo blockchain and for that we're going to focus on the structure of a blockchain. So for the purposes of this demo we have that there's a chain of blocks. There's block number one followed by block number two then block number three, then block number four, then block number five. Each one of the blocks has a block number. Additionally, there's a data field, and this would be all the data that would be included in this block. In the case of Bitcoin, it would be however many hundreds or thousands of transactions there would be in the block, but it's the data contained in the block. We have a corresponding SHA-256 hash for this block. A block in Bitcoin needs to have a corresponding hash that's below a certain target level. In this case, it's determined by a number of certain leading zeros at the start of the hash. As we can see in this specific example, we find that all of these blocks have hashes at the bottom that all start with at least four zeros. So what we find also is that this chain of blocks that we're seeing here, every block is linked to the following block. And what I mean by that is block number three has a corresponding hash that begins with four leading zeros and in this case ends in 140BF. But what we find is that there is a field called prev which has the actual hash corresponding to the previous block. And what we find is that we have a chain of blocks because block number two has a corresponding hash which is carried along into block number three in the previous field. You see this hash is the same exact hash that you have down here. And then this one specific block has its own hash and that hash is actually carried over to block number four as the previous hash. So what we have is a chain of blocks that are linked together by the corresponding hashes on the bottom. Now furthermore, because we're talking about distributed blockchains, we have multiple copies of this blockchain. So we have a blockchain that's held by peer A, we have peer B, we have peer C. In the case of Bitcoin, there would be thousands of copies of this blockchain because the Bitcoin network has thousands of full nodes that have each an exact copy of the blockchain. And what you'll find is that block number two, which is in peer A, is the same exact as block number two in peer B, same exact as block number two in peer C, same going all the way to block number five. Let's go all the way to block number five. And there's a reason why I'm telling you this because each one of these blocks is identical and you have a corresponding cryptographic hash. In the case of block number five, that hash ends in D217C. This block five has D217C and this block five has D217C. But let's assume that one of the nodes, in this case, let's just take peer B, decided to change a block and wanted to add an extra transaction or modify the contents of the block. If that miner were to make a change, automatically, the corresponding hash for that block would break. And in the process, the entire blockchain would break. Why? Because this block would no longer have four leading zeros. And as a result, it would not be valid in the Bitcoin network. And because this has no four leading zeros, it would also change block number four and it would break block number five because each one is cryptographically tied to the previous one. Now, even if this miner were to try to mine this block, to try to make it back so it would be valid according to the Bitcoin blockchain requirements and have a corresponding hash with a leading number of zeros, in this case four leading zeros, even though this block would still be valid again, it still would not fit with the rest of the blockchain. You would also see that the rest of the network would still have an identical copy of the blockchain that would not match this broken chain. So in this case, this one specific miner rearing off and breaking off the blockchain would have no impact whatsoever on the rest of the network because the rest of the network would have an identical copy of the Bitcoin blockchain. And even if this miner were to continue trying to mine his way to the front and remine each block, trying to create a new block of transactions and have the corresponding numbers of zeros, you would still find that 
the cryptographic hash for his block number five would not match the cryptographic hashes for the other nodes. So in this specific case, what you find is that the rest of the network would automatically be able to see that this specific blockchain does not match the rest of the blockchain. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so I invite you also to subscribe so we can stay in touch. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, we are changing the world one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy. Thank you for watching.